This week, Lab TV travels to NAVC Carterock in Bethesda, Maryland, to meet scientists and engineers who work with the heaviest materials, metals. Metal usually comes out of the ground, and in an ore, it's an oxide or carbide, and you clean it up, and then you roast it, and it becomes iron or copper or gold. Metal is an element. Actually, most elements are metals. Metals lose their outermost electrons easily, and these form a negatively charged cloud around each atom. They all join together as a sea of electrons and pull on the surrounding positively charged atoms. This creates a strong metallic bond, makes metal shiny, and gives it some very useful properties. It has what we call conductivity. So that means that we have electrons that can move through the metal, and it's due to this electron cloud that allows this passage of electrons. Metal can also transfer heat. And it transfers heat really well. Metal has a high melting point and can be molded, stretched, bent, and pounded into all sorts of shapes. A metal can be um, a series of elements on a periodic table, right? And within these elements, you can combine different metals to form what we call an alloy. To iron, you add a pinch of coronium, you add a pinch of nickel, you add, and there comes stainless steel. Doesn't rust. Before that, everything rusted. Creating alloys improves the performance of metals. And to improve them even more, these scientists have developed a new way to combine metals called a metal matrix composite. Now this is bronze here, the shiny material, and we added tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is an abrasive, and, and it will give you much better wear resistance. This is about seven times as heavy as water, and tungsten carbide is 15 times heavy as water. So just like the sand sinks in water, here is tungsten carbide that sank in the molten bronze and gave it this particular property. They can also create these composites by spinning. When you pour silicon carbide, which is heavier than aluminum, in aluminum, and then pour it in a mold that is rotating, the silicon carbide being heavier goes to the outside and it is all located here while this is pure aluminum. These composites combine the best qualities of each metal and they don't wear out. In fact, we are proud to say it will last forever and the ship will go in mothballs but this thing will not wear. The Navy also has a great way to join pieces of metal called friction stir welding. This is a friction stir welding system. Okay, and it's designed for joining and processing metals. If you can imagine, you know, you rub your hands together, right? And as you rub your hands together, you can feel how warm your hands get, like on a cold day. Sort of the same concept. You're rubbing two things together, you're going to generate frictional heat. Well, it actually does it by stirring. It's like stirring cake batter. Your big mixer goes in there and just spins it all around, and that's what it does. It, it softens the metal, and then the tools start to spin and it'll pull the material around the tool as it's going down the part and stick the two together without adding any filler material. Conventional welding can distort the metal. You have to add filler material and you have to wear lots of protective gear. With friction stir you have none of that. No fumes, nothing. You just plunge that tool in, spin it around whatever you need it to be welded, join the two together and you're finished. Metals will always be around. If you have a ship, you can't make it out of plastic. If something hits it, it will rupture it. But steel will bend and give and yet perform. Because it's the strongest stuff around. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Because, um, you know, you, you think about it, all your machinery, your, your planes, cars, bicycles, is all made out of some sort of metal. And that's, that's just awesome to me. To find out more about the structure and properties of metal, check out labtvonline.org.